On September 6, 2020, I ordered a Hornby J15 locomotive model in double O gauge. It was the first fine scale model train I had ever purchased, and thus began my model railway. I have been interested in trains since I was very young. Thomas and Friends was an enormous part of my childhood, and I have fond memories of going to heritage rail museums and model railroad displays around where I grew up. Along the way, I picked up bargain white elephant pieces at most places that I went, mostly just junk that no one else wanted. However, I always had a little bit of an itch to give model railroading a serious attempt. That itch grew significantly over the summer of 2020 when I rewatched a bunch of the old Thomas and Friends episodes and a bout of nostalgia amid the pandemic. Seeing all the beautiful models and sets that were featured in the early seasons of the show made me want to get into modeling again, and this time I found myself yearning for some of the stuff that I saw. I was looking for an outlet that didn't involve music around that time, so I went down the rabbit hole. Despite living in the United States, I model British trains. This is primarily because that was what the characters of Thomas and Friends are based on, and when I thought of trains, it was usually British locomotives that came to mind. The hidden benefit to this was that each character is based on a real prototype, so someone like me who had little knowledge of what models were even available could start with that. Right now I am modeling double O gauge, which is roughly equivalent to the HO skill that I had some experience with when I was younger. Luckily, they run on the same track so I can still use some of those bargains I got all those years ago. Here is my layout as it stands right now. It sits on my family's old dining room table, the diameter of which is just under 4 feet at its widest. I use Atlas Code 100 track because that was relatively cheap and easy to get. As you can see, I have a lot of track and nowhere to put it. Hopefully that will change soon, but for now, it just sits in a big pile in the middle. This siding over here is where I stage my trains, putting various rolling stock together as needed. It also features a handy piece of re-railer track should I need it. As for the rolling stock itself, I do have quite a lot of it. As mentioned previously, I started off buying a locomotive, and for a while, this is all I did. By the time I even owned proper track, I already had 15 pieces of rolling stock to my name. Currently, this collection has grown to include a total of 14 locomotives, 11 coaches, 11 wagons, and a railway gun. I will do a separate video detailing each of these models and the prototypes they were based on, but for now, here's all of them together. Considering I started less than a year ago, I am pretty proud of what I have so far. However, my mind is always on the future for this layout. My favorite model is always the next one, and I have a pretty good idea of where I'm heading next in terms of the structure of the layout and its rolling stock. First of all, here is the track plan for my first proper layout, which is simply called Double O Showcase. It is based on one I found online called HO Showcase, though I have modified it slightly. This layout leans on function more than form. It consists of two main loops, which I have dubbed the main line. The inner loop serves as a local line with access to the different yards and sidings, while the longer outer line is more of an express loop. To add variety to these otherwise simple loops, I envision tunnels and bridges at either end of the layout. There are two major sidings off of the local line. The one on the far side of the layout features a rolling yard meant for coaches and wagon storage and an engine yard. This is where the majority of my locomotives will reside. As the plan stands, there is room for 24 locomotives, so even with my already vast fleet there is still plenty of room for growth. The near siding is what I call the museum siding. Here I will feature two unique train packs in their entirety so that I do not need to deal with the hassle of coupling and uncoupling. This museum theme justifies and further enhances the general lack of prototypical basis of my layout, a sentence which probably went over most of your heads. Of course, the elephant in the room is this bit up here. Including a museum section inspired me to try and fill up some of the remaining space with another museum section, this time a little narrow gauge loop, and I have been obsessed with the idea ever since. I'm a huge fan of narrow gauge lines, so it was simply perfect to be able to add it to my first layout. 
Of course, this will require purchasing a whole new set of track and rolling stock, but I always planned on Double O Showcase to be a multi-step process so I could definitely focus on the standard gauge layout for now, and just add the narrow gauge part later. The line itself consists of a small station area, a loop around a lake, and two sidings, one off into a yard and the other a goods line into the presumed hills that make up the standard gauge tunnels. I have yet to figure out what I want to do with the line from here, but for now I have a cross over the standard gauge lines into a few smaller sidings that could represent different mine shafts possibly. Now all of this is great for me, but why am I showing this on my channel? Well, model trains have rapidly become an important part of my life, and I want to share that with all of you. Furthermore, it gives me another avenue of content to make. I have acquired quite a bit of knowledge about both model trains and their real-life counterparts, and I think that would be a nice way to spice up my content and format. So keep an eye out, and remember, train content can come from any direction and at any time. So stay off, stay away, and you just might stay alive.